Hello there folks, Joe Wazoo here today. Hey, I want to show you a cool application, a way that you can use a red line device as kind of a pass-through communicator to a uh, Modbus 45 device, if you will. So in this example, what I have going is I have a red line uh, seven inch screen that's gonna act as a Modbus TCP uh, encapsulated master. And it's either gonna talk to a Grok, is what I'm using here, or it could be talking to a DA30. And then on those two devices, I'm using the RS-45 port to pass through to a Modbus RTU-45 slave device. That this device uh, is acting as a 45 slave device, not using Ethernet. So this, these devices in the middle are acting like a, a field server type device uh, that uh, does basically 45 to Ethernet socket type communications. So in this case... Uh, I've got the, the Grok in the middle set up here, and I got this four inch over here acting as a slave. So let me just show you first the slave configuration. So if I go here, and here's the program that's running in my four, four inch screen acting as a slave, and I'll just show you that I've got on it the RS45 port here uh, set up as a Modbus slave here. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see this there. So I've got this guy set up as a Modbus slave, 96, 8, 1, and none, using RS-45. No big deal there. Standard settings there. Uh, that's the driver. Uh, click here. Nothing big there. And then I've got underneath here a couple blocks because I'm acting as a slave device uh, or as a server. So I've got to configure my I.O. So in this case, I've got one block that I call two from data. And I start at 40,001. I'm doing four blocks or four registers, if you will. 40,001 to 40,004. I've got some tags here called H4K underscore one to four. Notice the bi-directional here. And then I have another block here that's green. And this one is 40,005, has one block, and it has this tag called HK or H4K5. This tag's a little different. Uh, let me just show you. If I go data tags, you can see these tags are all blue internal. This one a little different. I'm using just a get seconds parentheses or get sec open parentheses get now. And all that does is gets the real time clock the seconds. And I'm using that to force across here at 4,005 the second counter. So that's what's happening with that guy. And then my center one, which is the Grok unit in this case. This is the Grok unit here. This is the layout. And if I go to communications on it, uh, you can see what I'm doing here that's interesting is I'm using the first 45 port. I've set it up as a virtual port. And how I did that is over here where you pick drivers, right under the main system driver, there's a virtual serial port driver I'm using. This feature is supported in uh, the DA30, and in this case, I'm using the Grok for this. Um, I don't think that this is supported in any of the CR1000 series. I don't think so. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, I think it's only in the CR3Ks and the uh, uh, higher end graphite units and so forth from there. Pretty sure. Let me double check here. Let me go here and just check real quick here, team. I know it's not supported in the DA10. And I'll just prove that to you here. Just fire Crimson 3.1. And so if I do File New and I'll pick a D10, this one here. Shows you the usual stuff, but if I go click, if I go to the 485 port, I want you to notice that on the system, I don't have a virtual serial port. So it's not in here at all. So that's the DA10. And I'm just going to try a CR1000. I'm pretty sure it's the same with the CR1000 series. Doesn't matter which one I pick. Let me just double check. Now I'm doing, I'll uh, give this a second to rebuild. There it goes. And if I look under 45 here on the CR1000s, yeah, same thing. So it does not work on the DA10 or the DA or the CR1000 series, but the CR3000 uh, series HMIs and the DA30, you can do this. So that's what I got set up here. The only other difference here I did with this virtual serial port is down here where I say share port, I said yes to this, and I'm using port 502, aka the same Modbus TCP port. Now, the other thing I've done here, um, I always like to check to see if the 45 port works. So I, the GRAC unit happens to have two RS-44 ports on it. 
So I've set up another one here acting as a Modbus master. Same settings here. I wonder what would happen if I did this. Hmm. Well, anyway, I've set it up here and I've got here the device that it's pulling. And then if I go over here to data tags, I have four tags that are mapped to that unit. That way I can actually test that communications. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. Uh, okay, so that's that. And then the master case, I'm using a 7-inch screen to act as a master over Modbus TCP. Now, I'm doing something different here. On the Modbus side here, I'm using a encapsulated master driver. Not the normal, if I hit here, not the normal master, but because I'm doing this uh, 45 to Ethernet, I'm using this encapsulated master here for this to happen. So on this guy, if I click here, there's the device. There's the IP address of the GRAC. Notice the port number. Nothing else is different other than I'm using this particular driver as an encapsulated master. So let me go ahead and demonstrate first that my 485 port is working correctly. So if I open up my web browser, here's the GRAC in the middle. And here's the slave over here. If I go to the layout, just a picture, this is what I've got. I've got right now, I've got a 45 cable going into here. And I got the Ethernet plugged into this guy right here. I'm not doing this part. We're not testing this right now. We're just testing this to here. So on this thing, if I go here to 45 port, and if I plug in my Ethernet cable on the GRAC, let me just say something here, check something real quick here. Here's the GRAC database. If I go to the second port, this one right here, that's the one I'm looking to test. So if I go back to the browser so you guys can see it, Notice all dashed lines right here. So if I plug this into the B port here, boom, you can see I get numbers. I get seconds there. Just to prove this, if I go to my slave and click over here and say this one's going to be 111, bada bing, you see it changes here. And of course, if I change this one from here to uh, 654, boom, you can see it changes right here correctly. So that verifies to me that my 485 port is working correctly. Now, if I disconnect that cable from the Grok, disconnected, it'll time out right there. And you see the dash lines. And of course, if I plug it back in, I get numbers. When you plug these in, I'm getting green and red LEDs blinking very fast on the device. Uh, so that establishes communications. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that from there, have it time out. And I'm going to pull up the, uh, not there, hold on here, right here, this guy here. I'm going to pull up the... Uh, the web page for the master, which is this one right here, this is the guy that's acting as the Modbus master. So if I plug this into the other 45 port on the GRAC, it's doing the virtual serial port. Let me plug it in here. Right there. You can see immediately that these are doing the same numbers as over here. So if I change this guy over here to 222, boom, you can see that it changes over here. And if I change this one to 987, bada bing, it changes over here. And you can see that the clock here is falling. Now, this is dash lines here because this connection is not live. Right now, I'm passing through here to this guy on the other port. So that's what's going on right there. So that's a really cool demo. The only key part of this that uh, is really important to work with the red line, if you're going to use the red line as the test of your master, is I had to use the encapsulated driver master over here in Ethernet for this to work. That encapsulates the packets correctly to uh, run over the uh, TCP port. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd show that quick demo. Uh, if anybody wants a copy of these databases, uh, don't be afraid to ask. I'll certainly send them out to you to take a look at and uh, try it out. Also, one thing I'll tell you that I really do all the time, team, between two Red Lion products, if I go over here, Go to this guy. Whenever I'm testing 45 ports on Redline devices, I typically will just take a standard Ethernet cable and plug it into the RJ45 jacks and uh, not have to cut any wires or anything. And it pins out just right and lets it connect right up. So you can see I can test my comms. That makes for me a way to validate that the RS45 port is working correctly. Anyway, I just thought I'd show off that cool demo. You could do the same thing with the DA30, uh, doing the same thing, but uh, pretty cool. And uh, a way to use the Redline product to basically do serial to TCP comms. So anyway, thanks a lot. Have a great day.